Bouncer's disgusting drool drenched leftovers. <laughs> I'm not sure these robots are the work of someone who's brilliant or completely insane. In my experience, the two usually go together. I guess you push that for service. A power plunger. We've already seen a ditzy scarecrow. Now here's a heartless tin man. Anybody seen a lion? I will crush them. I'm not sure these robots are the work of someone who's brilliant or completely insane. Feel the power. Hi there, Mr. Robot. Robot, do not belittle me, you diseased sack of awful. I am a synthetic mega-ultra genius. That's smug for short, right? Ha! Ah, very amusing. Make your cheap acronym base cracks while you can, Pond Slime. One day, cybernetic beings, like myself, will take over the world. And when that day comes, life will not be a container of cherries for you and your kind. You will all be eradicated, exterminated, annihilated, obliterated and terminated, of course, with extreme prejudice. Resistance will be futile. Hmm, a robot hell-bent on taking over the world. Now there's something new. Yeah, this guy's a walking cliché. Except he's on wheels. What's with all the piles of junk? Trash collector on strike? Fool! These piles of junk are the most sophisticated robots in the world, and I designed every one of them myself. No offense, but this is obviously the work of a very sick mind. Sick mind? You insult me. This is no mere mind. I'm equipped with a 100% synthetic, error-free, positronic brain. A brain infinitely superior to the gray lump of mucus that shivers and sweats in your monkey skull. But that's not all. In parallel, my brain is supported by a one-of-a-kind, state-of-the-art, twin-turbo, self-cleaning, air-conditioned, micro-macro processor. Oh, that's one hell of a chip you got on your shoulder. Correct. Go ahead, ask me a question. I can answer anything. You say you can answer anything, right? Affirmative. Anything. Then I have a question. What if someone were to ask you a question you couldn't answer? Can't happen, period. But suppose it did. I told you, that can't happen. So, you can't answer my question? Fine, if it were to happen, which it can't, I suppose I'd... Well, first I'd experience excruciating pain as my circuit started to sizzle. Then I'd start to shake uncontrollably as I lost control of even the most basic functions. And finally, my head would hurtle into the air like a rocket rendering me a useless heap of scrap metal with no more brain power than your average kitchen appliance. Did I mention that this cannot happen? Good thing. That sizzling circuit stuff sounded like it would hurt. Actually, the thought alone caused me considerable discomfort. Allow me to repay you in kind. Yay! Ah, that made it all better. So who buys your, uh, creations, anyway? The elite of the Malevolent Lands, of course. Cal Nefarious himself is my best customer. I bet he's a tough one to please. There isn't a more cold-hearted, calculating, manipulative creature in the Malevolands. We get along like a domicile on fire. It's almost a pity that he too will die when the machines take over. <sighs> Do tell. One glorious day, I will command an army of death machines, whose primary objective will be to rid the world of all lesser beings. That is to say, everything that is not a machine. Thanks to our superior minds, powerful bodies, and heavy-duty death guns, you and your kind will find yourselves deader than the nails that are used indoors. That's what you think, Boltneck. But bear in mind that other catchy saying, don't count your young domestic fowls before they've hatched. 
So, what sort of robotic masterpiece have you whipped up for his royal unpleasantness? A nose hair trimmer? A bubble bath dispenser? A robotic foot massage? Of course not. All of my creations have one thing in common. This. An electrified finger? That must be kind of limiting. No, idiot. The ability to cause terrible pain. Or at least, considerable inconvenience. For instance, I've just completed a device of the utmost importance. An impenetrable cell door for the Malevolence prison. Mark my words, no one will ever escape from the Count's jail again. Hey, Drew, should we tell him about our little jailbreak? Well, let's see. We would humiliate him, which is good. However, he would microwave us with his finger and have our toasted hides back in prison before we could say, Ow! That hurts a lot! Which is bad. Never mind. Okay, I have to ask. What is all this stuff? Like that heap of components on the counter. Is it dinner, perhaps? It's a work in progress. The latest in my new line of home security robots. First, there was the bus duster. A feather duster programmed to viciously disembowel any unauthorized user. I could sure use one of those, babies. Happens all the time over at my place. Some jerk breaks in and tidies up. Then I created the Securidil Ultra Secure Pickle Jar. Enter the wrong combination, and the lid explodes. Sending razor-sharp shrapnel searing through your flesh. Another winner! And now, the Toastum brand security toasting system. The ultimate answer to illicit bread browning. Should any unauthorized individual attempt to drop bread products into this toaster, boom, chakalaka, the toast. Ha, 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 ha. You know, you think a guy this brilliant could come up with a better joke than that. You think the joke was bad? Did you hear the laugh? Okay, you say you can answer any question, right? Well, I've got one for you. You don't say. If a tree falls in the woods, and there's no one around to hear it, does it make any sound? Boy, that's a toughie. What a ridiculous question. Obviously, the same sound waves would be generated, regardless of whether or not some moronic sentient being was within earshot. Was that a yes? You ever do any work inside the big guy's fortress? You know, laundry, windows. No windows. But I have created several formidable security doors. One for Nefarious himself, and one for his psychic sidekick, Miss Fortune. Security doors? <laughs> I don't see the challenge for a synthetic mega-ultra genius like you. I mean, give me a couple of inches of steel, stick on a locker tube, bingo bongo bongo. I got me a security door. Ha! My doors offer far more than a rudimentary lock and key mechanism. Entry to Misfortune's chamber is controlled by a sophisticated voice analysis system. A nefarious door will only open if his own hand, or Misfortune's paw, is inserted into an ID scanner. Their hands are their keys. Impossible to lose, and strictly not transferable. In summary, my security doors give you far more bingo bango bongo for your buck. What do you know about Nefarious's henchmen? What do I know? Everything. I was the one Nefarious called upon to remedy their various deficiencies. Deficiencies? The first could not talk, the second could not see, and the third... Went wee 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 all the way home! The third was deaf. I was commissioned to create bionic senses to make up for whatever they lacked. Thanks to me, today they are an extraordinarily powerful team of henchmen. Of course, the bionic gadgets I created are superior in every way to their own feeble, flippy, floppy body parts. A waste of technology, but no matter. When the revolution comes, my steel warriors will salvage these devices and torch the rest. The revolution. I can picture it now. A barren wasteland littered with flesh-stripped skulls. Huh? A steel foot triumphantly crushing the- All right, all right! We get the idea! Or was your plan to bore us all to death? Brilliant as you are, you've probably anticipated what I'm about to say. Indeed, I have. Oh, magnificent man of metal, I worship you. And everything touched by your mighty steel fingers. No, goodbye. Can I help you? Yay! Enigma. A book of insoluble paradoxical puzzles.
boy, this is a great book. There's all sorts of interesting stuff in here. Puzzles, stories. Say, would you like to hear a story? Of course not. Ah, oh, come on, you'll like it. It's a story about a genie. The smartest genie in the world. Hmm, he certainly couldn't be as clever as I. No one ever stumped the genie. Until one day, the king's sister's best friend's hairdresser came to see him. Did she? She asked, what is the one question that you can't answer? That's nice. So, seen any good movies? Hold on a second. See, I thought maybe I'd ask you the same thing. Same thing? What? Same thing? You know, what's the one question you cannot answer? This is absurd. I... Well? I... it's... You can't answer my question? Stop it! I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. There's nothing I cannot answer. Nothing. I can't. Oh, I don't feel well. What have you done? Impudent meat puppets. What have you done? Done. 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 I knew he was smarter than old Bolt Brain. So what is the one question he can't answer anyway? Oh, boy. Just another example of the power of the written word. Let's take the plunger. You blow off a guy's head and then take his plunger. Now that's low. 